Beauty and the Beast was a show that I really enjoyed in the first season. I thought that the at the heart of that show, it was the love story between the two characters, um, Catherine and um, and the Beast. <laughs> and um, I thought that that was where the heart of the show lied. And at the end, they showed that he was being captured and he was being taken away. And... Um, and so at the so we weren't sure what was going to happen. And then this other character, Gabe, he was also a beast. And then they shot him, and it was all so dramatic. And you know, Catherine's raising her arm up to the ceiling, and she's like, you know, don't leave me, don't leave me, as she as he's being whisked away. And so it was all really like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? So we find out now that um, they've come back, and it's three months later, and. Um, and um, the characters are basically uh, have been separated for these, these three months. And um, he was taken in by Muirfield and he was basically reprogrammed. And they have reprogrammed him with some things that we know and I'm sure some things that we're not quite sure of just yet. And um, one of the people that kidnapped him is actually Catherine's real father. And we found that out at the end of the uh, first season and um, that her real father, the, the, first, the father that we thought we knew, um, was not actually her real father. And in a scene that just before um, it, the climax of the ending, her father was hit by a car and that was the last we saw of him. Um, and then at the start of season two, we find out that her father's died. Her sister knows that he's not her real father because when they went to give blood, um, the doctor basically told her that she wasn't a match and so her sister's been sitting with this secret now for three months and she's uh, hasn't told her sister yet um so you know one of the one of the things again that i i enjoy about uh beauty and the beast is they've got a lot of different levels you know they've got some really good friendships at its core at the core of this of the series we've got some powerful women as the police officers in in the series and you know they're, they they can fight they can you know they're they're not just like these yes women they don't just you know, do what the boss tells them to do and, and um, scurry away. They're actually leading the charge. And um, so I, I, I really enjoyed that with, um, I enjoyed that about this series. So right now we're at the point where we're trying to still figure out what exactly they've done to the beast. Um, and, and we don't know. Like, we know that he's working for this... Um, Mirrorfield has actually been destroyed. It was destroyed in the first uh, episode coming back. And and um, we know that there's more than one beast out there. And basically people have bought them. And so that's very interesting to know that people are actually purchasing these, pe these beasts and they're using them for their own good, or should I say evil. And, um, and, and Catherine's father, her real father, has um, Vincent. And um, at this point, Vincent has no memory. So he's come back after three months and he has no recollection of who Catherine is, who his best friend was, who's, who they've been living together for, you know, 10 years. He's been trying to help him, uh, save him from himself and trying to cure him from being this beast that he, that, uh, he was created through Mirrorfield. And um, so now Catherine and, and, Vin and um, Vincent have started off season two in a, in a position where, you know, she's so in love with him and he doesn't even remember her. And he had really no interest in getting to know her because he's basically set on a mission and he's not trying to deviate from that. And I don't think he has any option. I don't think he has the option to deviate from the plan. So at this point, um, he's starting to have, in the last episode, um, which I think was episode three, uh, there was a scene where Catherine is about to fall down this elevator shaft and he grabs for her wrist and, you know, he's like saving her. And in that moment, he has a few flashes of their life together that they've had over this past season um, leading up to this. And, and so that was kind of nice to see that he has he is getting some of his memories back. Um, but Catherine was kind of having none of it because in the episode before this one, he pushed her and he hurt her and he like put a huge bruise on her neck and so at this point she's kind of over Vincent I mean we all know she's not let's face it he's hot he's a man she's been like obsessed with him since like the beginning of season one so 
he is never far from her mind. So let's not get it twisted. However, um, she's, you know, she got banged up and she's scared and she's not exactly sure what he's capable of now because before Vincent would never, ever hurt Catherine. And he's already proved that, proven that he can and he would and he did. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. And I'm just, like I said, I'm hoping that there's not going to be like too much of this push-pull, push-pull. Um, because really, again, at the heart of this series is um, the two of them and their undying love for each other and the fact that they would pretty much do anything for each other. And um, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the second season. I think that they've done some serious gore factors in the first five minutes of this last episode. Um, one of the beasts that um, has been created uh, had broken into some guy's car who was also working for, I believe it's the CIA at this point. Um, I don't know if they've, yeah, maybe it's the CIA, FBI or CIA. And um, he basically rammed his hand through his back and out of his tummy. So it was kind of nasty, but it made for great television. So um, again, I'm pleased with Beauty and the Beast. I'm liking the direction it's going in and um, I'm sticking with it. No complaints here.